Okay, two, three times. Okay, so you probably all know me. My name is Emmett Brown. Well, actually, no. My name is Baruch, and I'm a developer advocate with JFrog. And uh, today, in this session, we're going to talk a little bit about the future roadmap of Artifactory. Before we get there, let me uh, talk to you a little bit about what have been, uh, we have been done lately. So I was very busy inventing time travel with the, who knows what is it? Flux capacitor, thank you very much. I have a lot of drink coupons to give away, you got one. <laughs> okay, yeah, we will, we will try to do this today. So ex except of inventing time travel, um, you know, we did a lot of collaboration between JFrog Artifactory and a lot of different companies and cool tools of them. So that includes Pivotal Cloud Foundry, um, which will now use Artifactory as a binary repository. If you were, we realize CodeStream, you probably all heard uh, this morning in Kit's keynote mentioning that Artifactory is the binary repository of CodeStream. This thing is really annoying. C8 Technologies with their Nolio release management product also um, uses Artifactory as the uh, recommended uh, highly available storage for the artifacts and even IBM Urban Code Deploy now have Artifactory plugin. So this is all nice, but next, what I'm going to show you next will actually blow you away. And those are the new features in Artifactory available of today. Our Amazon S3 is, is a standard de facto for, a, for blob storage. And starting from the latest version of Artifactory, you can store the artifacts in any S3 compatible storage instead of storing them on a file system. And it might not be a big deal for a certain amount of artifacts, but when we are going to the huge scales that, we, that you saw today in some, in some uh, talks, this could be a real saver because you can actually grow unlimitedly on this platform. Another very important um, uh, feature that we have for a couple of versions now is the multi-push replication. I'm sure you all know about the artifactory replication feature, um, when you can actually pull the artifacts from multiple repositories or push the artifact to a remote repository, artifact to a remote repository. Multi-push is, is what it is. It allows you to push the artifacts to multiple repositories out there. Again, this is a very important uh, milestone for us when we are um, uh, preparing Artifactory for a real huge deployments as they are used already. And another very important feature that we are going to build on top of it more and more, and you will see today in today's talk, is the Artifactory query language. Um, whoever didn't hear about Artifactory query language, this is the ability to query for artifacts based on any metadata in Artifactory. So the thing is, binary repository, it's all about metadata, right? Otherwise, it's just, I don't know what, like pile of files or, or heap of files. The difference between the dump file storage and the smart file storage is the metadata that the artifacts have. And, and it can come from various places. And the, the, the first subject, subject is, of course, the build integration. You have your a continuous integration platform that deploys produced artifacts to Artifactory and annotates with more and more information as, as you, your promotion pipeline goes through. But it can be a REST API. It can be even the UI. It can be in the Artifactory UI, your own custom UI that uses the REST API, whatever. The thing is, the older Artifact gets inside Artifactory, the more metadata it gets. And this is all nice, but the real question is then, how can we use this metadata to find the exact artifacts? How can I express something like, I want the artifact from one of the latest builds, but only if it suits a certain target platform with a certain architecture and pass the QA on a certain level. Now, this, what I just mentioned is a, is a query. And up until the latest versions of Artifactory, uh, there were no way in any binary repository out there 
to express this query in a query language. But now there is. Artifactory comes with an artifactory query language when you actually can code ex the exact sentence I just said and get a subset of artifact which actually expresses the exact set of the properties that you are interested. And of course here the, the sky and the limit and uh, as I mentioned today we are going to see some usages of artifactory query language in what we are going to see in the future. So all this is not about the future, but now let's talk about the future. And the future that we are going to talk about is the real future from Back to the Future, which is October 21, 2015. Right? It's not very distant, but you will see how things will change in those six months. The world won't be the same in October 21st. And um, for that, we will need a DeLorean coming from the future. I'm Doc Brown. Well, I'm Doc Brown. Brown. But I came from the future. But you are Roy Zanwell. Yeah, I'm actually Roy Zanwell, product manager from the factory. And I must say, Doc Brown, uh, the time that you did me a lot of justice. <laughs> so we are here to talk about the future of the factory. Yeah, but first, first disclaimer. Now, I don't know what you uh, take whatever he said with a grain of salt. Because the future isn't always what we want it to be and what it is presented by future Doc Browns. Things might not get exactly as it was described on this talk. Well, prepare to be amazed. All right. In the very near future, you're going to see some things that will really blow your mind. So remember this coffee grinder. Yeah, I have. This is a coffee grinder for groups. I have one at home. It works very nice. So in the, in the future, we have something that's called Mr. Fusion. It's an amazing device that what it actually does it, you pour any kind of uh, liquid in it or any kind of uh, organic matter and it turns it into uh, raw No energy. way, really? For sure, but that's nothing. Artifactory, as you know, also can uh, be a fusion itself and can basically store any kind of, any kind of file type, right? So Artifactory, it's like Mr. Fusion of today. You put anything you want into it and you got pure revenue out of it. So you're already familiar with all the different integrations that Artifactory already suggests, with all the different build tools, packet management, image management, etc. right? Yeah, but the, all this we have already. I don't see any future news here. So besides a lot of enhancements for our .NET users, uh, improved support for Docker v2, uh, a lot of other enhancements that we can see in Docker, we also be able to see the new integration with Vagrant Boxes. This is neat. This is amazing. So besides supporting the local repository for Vagrant Boxes, we also be able to proxy remote repositories, such as uh, the hashicorp.com for Atlas. So and Vagrant has its own packaging standard. It has exactly. its own metadata exactly. that will be supporting the Naughty Factory. Like many others, if you're using the Vagrant Boxes, it's, of course, a demand that you'll be able to store it in Naughty Factory as well. I take this over Mr. Fusion like today. <laughs> well, it's only the beginning. What else, what else did, you, did you see in the future? An actual flying car. But this is my DeLorean. <laughs> well, in the future, no more problem getting from place to, to a place, no more traffic. The only thing that you need, still need to find is a place to park. Yeah, this is because you come from Tel Aviv. That's true. Where that's I true. live, we don't have a parking problems. So, but, but, but let me understand, this sounds like a very, very efficient way to travel. Uh, right. You another, don't need roads. Right, and another very efficient way to travel and sync your information is something that you'll be able to see in Artifactory, which is called Smart Remote Repository. You, you have to explain it to me. Let's go through it together. So, currently when you configure a remote repository, uh, you just need to push the URL and all the different configuration. Uh, in the later version that we have in the future, and you'll be able to see shortly, you'll be able to configure a smart remote repo, meaning that if on the other end of, uh, of the remote repo there's another Artifactory instance or a Bintray instance, there are whole sort of capabilities that you'll be able to get out the shelf just because you're using them on, the, on the, both the same that, instance. That makes perfect sense. Once your remote end is smart and you know the protocol, you can actually use this smartness even in front of your repository, even before you pull the artifacts. Right, so let me give you a couple examples. Go ahead. So in the configuration process, all you need to do is put the URL. 
once we be able to trigger and identify that on the other end there is another artifactory instance or another bin tray repository, for example, we be able to fetch all the different configuration, such as the content type uh, layout, for example, and all the different configuration, you, you'll get it out of the box. So that means that I don't need to travel over five tabs in artifactory configuration. I just provide the URL and it populates all the rest for me. That's exactly that. That's, that's like a flying car. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to see the next one, you'll be truly amazed. Also, we'll be able to sync all the properties. Everything that we store in Artifactory is metadata related to each one of the artifacts. That's pure gold information that you want to be able to sync throughout all of the Artifactory instances within your organization, right? Well, that makes sense. If I, um, if I fetch a remote artifact, I can bring all the properties with it because I know there are properties. The other side is smart. It exactly. has properties. Right. Yep. So that's just one of the things. Another thing you'll be able to do is the amazing AQL, the Artifactory Query Language. So currently you're only able to query your local instance. But once again, we know that on the other side there is another Artifactory instance. You'll be able to query that as well. That will give you the abilities to fetch only the artifact you actually need. So a lot of time we do need to use a certain mechanism like replication to be able to sync the entire repository. But in some of the cases, we don't want to sync the entire repository just to get the actual artifacts that we want. And again, knowing on the other side that uh, stands another artifactory bin tray instance, we can execute those REST API calls and get just the information that we so, need. But this is, I think, the most important of from what I saw just now. So not, not going through the tabs is nice, getting the properties is also nice, but it's solvable in other ways. But the ability to query on the local repository and get the search results from the remote repository, this can save me downloading of thousands, if not millions of files. Yeah, once you know on the other side, there is a REST API that will support certain queries and, and other capabilities, you'll be able to utilize them, and that's amazing. That's, that's super cool indeed. Another cool feature that will come with it is the ability to push file into the remote repository, which again, of course, is very useful in, instead of doing a full replica push replication sync, which is again, in some use cases, very beneficial, but mostly you want to just be able to monitor and control the actual artifacts you want to push to the remote repository. Okay, I'm selling my DeLorean today to buy artifactory instance. <laughs> I think Tali can give you a good price on it. Okay, what else do you have for me? Well, the next item on the list is a new weather service. So you know how you get out of the house and you don't know if you need to pay, carry your umbrella or you need to grow sandals and just walk Not about. in California, not in Israel. <laughs> That's actually very true. But in the future, we have this amazing weather service. It gives you full control to know at the exact second what the weather is going to be like. If it's going to rain in 15 seconds, you're going to know it. If you're going to travel to London and it's going to rain in 8.05.05 p.m., you'll be able to control that's that perfect. as well. That's perfect. That gives me full control. I won't go to London if there is rain there in the 15 seconds. But that's minor. The amazing thing about it is something that's that very nice. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. The amazing thing that you'll be able to see with controlling Artifactory is the mission control. Well, this is not Artifactory. Artifactory cannot control weather even in a six months time. You're right. Since you're still living in the, well, this is the present, but for me it's the past, you're not aware of it. But Artifactory has a whole new application that is called the mission control. And let Walk me, me through it. Okay. So the mission control is a whole new application that right. will sit on top of all of your Artifactory instances and you'll basically have one interface to rule them all. This is another movie. Right. This is not ours. So you know the one from our DevOps team, right? Of course. Yeah. So uh, in, the, in the future, you'll become a much happier person. You'll have much more time to drink beer and whiskey because instead of going through each one of the servers, so let's say today he managed something like 20, 25 servers, right? Yep. So he needs to trick through all different UIs, repeat the same configuration over and over again. Of course. Making sure he didn't forget any one of the instances just to implement new features, yes. for example. This is what we have today. So in the future, with this uh, single, uh, single UI, you'll be able to push the configuration and federate and manage all of your Artifactor instances within the organization with one single application. Well, I'm very concerned for the health of Doron. <laughs> he is going to become an alcoholist very, very fast. Yeah, but it will be good for his wife and kids. He'll have more time to spend with them, so I think everybody will benefit. I'm not sure I buy this <laughs> sentence, but that's okay. <laughs> 
Another great thing is you'll be able to manage templates for configuration. So again, instead of repeating the same action over and over again, for all the admin, for all the admin actions that currently support in Artifactory UI, they will be supported in a, single, uh, in a single address that you'll be able to go through and monitor all of your Artifactory instances within your organization. This is very nice. I agree, this is gonna be super cool. Yeah, yeah, pour the on. So another thing you can expect in the future, well, ah, that, actually, that wasn't in the future. Yeah. I remember that vividly. So you remember the, the lightning that struck the, the clock tower, Of course, right? it was 1955, and the clock was out of order, and it took them years to fix the clock. And every time you walked past the clock, you were sure it was half past eight, and you were running somewhere, and you were late, or it was 10, right? Yeah. So the reason that this happened, because it didn't have the disaster recovery. What do you mean disaster recovery? So you know currently how you need to configure disaster recovery. And I, wrote this, right? I wrote this documentation. You of wrote this wiki page? Yes. yes. So <laughs> I will tell you how to do it. You need to sync the database with the file system. Right. And the most important thing is keep them in sync. Because if you fail to keep them in sync, you might end up with corrupted data in the database or the file system. Artifactory won't find the files or the files will be shown where they are not there. So it took you like a minute and a half just to explain how to do it and that's even without doing it. Yes. In the future, you'll be able to, see, to do this entire thing with a single field. All you need to do is configure the IP or the URL of the, the instance that you want to, uh, that you want to uh, roll over in case of a disaster. So in case of a lightning strike in your data center, you'll be able to roll over immediately to another data center and continue to work because the disaster recovery will be managed in the application level. Let me understand how it works. So what I see here is the UI of the passive server. Right, exactly. And the URL that I enter here is the URL of the active server. Right. And this passive server will watch the logs of the active server and replay the exact same operations on this server. Right. Which and this server will actually be disabled and not operational for the time that we have a ping from the live server OK. Yeah, so once the active server uh, will not give the keep alive sync anymore, the passive server or the one in the, the, the disaster recovery will come to live, but you'll be able to continue to deploy your build, resolve your build, resolve it's, your artifacts, and everything will work. We will have magic in the future. <laughs> It's, it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. I agree. This is one of the coolest features that we're going to have. What else? More? There is more. There Come is on. actually more, yeah. You're spoiling so, me. I think you should sleep a lot, like, today or tomorrow, because we're going to work very hard in the next couple months. <laughs> so, actually, in the future, everything is robotic. The way that you order your hamburger, you get your Coke, you order food and drinks and clothes. Full everything. automation. Yeah, which is not far from the present, right? I think like 80% of the interaction with Artifactory currently is done by different script and bots in an automated way. But Ronald Reagan doesn't serve Pepsi as of today in the coffees. Uh, this is actually true, but another great thing and actually great gift that we got from our friend from Yahoo is also uh, the CLI and SSH uh, mechanism. You need project. to explain me how to do it. Okay, so you know how we've been, been talking a lot about creating a CLI client for both Artifactory and Bintray, right? Yeah, I was talking about it and never got to do it. Uh, so we picked up the project and we decided to implement it ourselves. So we got a good you, head a second, started. Wait a second, project is this? I, I told you that our friends from Yahoo, they gave us to that at the Thank Christmas present. Thank you very much, yeah. <laughs> Give it up. The dog so, from the future yeah. thanks you. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, the, the number of use cases that you see this happening is, is endless, right? Yeah, of course, of course. So I, I would say what excited me most about the CLI, how I dreamed about it, you know this, uh, you know this generic deploy uh, capability of our CI plugins? Wow, that was that. I don't know. That wasn't intended. It's back. OK. OK? Don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, you know the generic deploy capability of our CI servers, right? right. Uh, for Team City, for Bamboo, for, for Jenkins, they all do the same. If you have a build tool that doesn't have a dependency management built in, you can still enjoy dependency management with this plugin. So before the build, artifacts are downloaded from Artifactory to a known location inside the build server, and then the build runs, let's say, make. 
It expects the artifacts to be there. It uses them for the build. Eventually, it produces a bunch of other artifacts. And the plugin kicks in again, takes those artifacts from a known location in the CI server, and uploads them to a certain repository and artifactory. Got exactly. the picture? Right. Yeah, so this is a very, very popular scenario. The only problem with this scenario is that it only works in the CI server. So there is no client generic builds. With the CLI, we can finally can implement the generic build for the client machines. Because now, we can use the CLI to download the artifacts <laughs> to a known location on the disk, run whatever build tool you use, and then deploy the artifacts back to Artifactory. This actually enables generic builds for the client machines. True. But another amazing feature that we already have the concurrent downloads. It's about time we start using our great concurrent downloader. Exactly. So just to mention, of course, that under the hood, the CLI server will just execute a bunch of REST API calls, which give it a great ability also to enhance its capabilities as we move forward. Yeah, this is awesome. And of course, it should be pattern-based in order to select which artifacts to download, where to put them, where to take them from, and where to deploy them. Yeah, but This is the neat stuff. To complete the picture, of course, you don't need to pass the username and, and password every time okay. you want Who to Okay, who uses write. username and password? I only go for anonymous. Right, so it's only, it's only reasonable that we'll have the SSH authentication. Or all, all that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, not, it's pretty straightforward. You'll be able to configure your private and, and uh, private and uh, public key within your Artifactory user. And this is also from our guys in Yao. I think Alan is starting to blush here, so. Uh, <laughs> I have a couple of green coupons left. <laughs> and I think Alan just got a bunch of them. <laughs> so maybe we get another Christmas present this year. A lot of drinking coupons. <laughs> that yeah, sounds like sure. a great Christmas <laughs> present for me. Uh, lastly, on the, on the automation uh, process with Artifactory is the user plugin uh, improvements. Yeah, now. this is my dear. I love user plugins, and I want to see them involved. I so know. I will tell you what my pain is, okay. and I will try to guess if you can answer them. All right? I'm you from the future, so I guess I'll be thinking about the same thing. You don't have amnesia by then? <laughs> no. OK, so go ahead. <laughs> so uh, firstly, there will be the UI management. You'll be able to see the, the user plugin that are configured within your Artifactory instance and know their status in, states, in case when the server comes up. There was a problem loading one of them. Uh, you can change the different configuration for the logback XML. So if you want uh, to configure uh, them to write to a certain log, you'll be able to do it from the UI. Just a very easy interface for you to manage all your user It's plugins. about time. It's about time. We have so many artifactory instances in artifactory in JFrog. I never know where to go to find the plugins. The second one will really amaze you because I know it's something that near it dear to your heart. To your heart? Well, to our heart. So currently, you know, in order to execute the REST API call from within a user plugin, you actually need to create an HTTP yeah, client, Yeah, someone ever right? did it. This is the most ridiculous thing in the world. You actually embed the HTTP client inside a user plugin to get outside and get from the REST API to use something that is only available through REST API, but not available in public API. So you say no more? No more. So you'll, have <laughs> so you'll be able to execute uh, those REST API with a much, much easier interface. And of course, that will enable you also to query the Artifactory uh, instance, because you'll be able to execute the AQL REST API. Yeah, course. AQL. AQL is everywhere. Uh, the next thing is you'll be able to interact between the different plugins, which means you can reuse the code instead of rewriting it over and over again. This is very, very good as well. And the last thing? And the last thing, OK. So as you know, there is another pain in the user plugins area, which is the class pass hell and the dependency management. Right. And you say we will tackle that as well. The future is amazing. Now, this is way better than flying machines. True. And talking to Roland Dragon serving you a Pepsi. I told you I'm going to amaze far. you. All right. What? More? I told you, you're not going to sleep at all. Trust me. <laughs> so the fashion in the future is quite different, as you can see. Yeah, People can started see. to wear their pockets inside out. They're all kind of different ties. Uh, kids are wearing these really weird plastic heads. Elijah I have to say that Elijah Woods aged very strangely. <laughs> yeah. In a way, he got to be much younger. But I got to be much more beautiful as we grow older. So you know, things happen. 
Uh, also, young kids, they have this all weird kind of fashion. If you think this jacket is weird, look at these guys. I want this hat. <laughs> I can get it for you. But the thing that I love the most is the double tie. Double tie? Double tie. <laughs> double tie in Artifactory will get an actual new UI. Double tie and Artifactory UI. Yeah, we had to go for some something that will rhyme. So no, we but that was the worst. No yeah. one laughed. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll fix it for the next one. Okay. Uh, so we've been talking about the new UI for how long now? Six years. The day the old UI got out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it took us some time because we were really into making new feature and making Artifactory uh, has much more capabilities, right? Yes. But it is about time that we'll put some attention on the new Well, on the I have UI to say, well. this looks fresh and non based on Wicked. <laughs> Very true. So yeah, besides changing the infrastructure, we also started to reorganize the, the way that the UI, uh, the, the UI look and feel. So again, because Artifactory is so feature packed, we just put everything, all the capabilities that we want to do in the UI, just place them over there without too much organization thinking. So in the new UI, we made everything much cleaner, uh, much more modern, more spacious, so you'll be able to read and, and understand where you're going through the UI. But not only making it prettier, we also may make sure to put a lot of attention on the user experience. OK, so what do we have? So I think the most common interactions I, people have with Artifactory is when they come to browse and search for different artifacts, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So firstly, of course, again, with the AQL, we enhanced the search mechanism and made it much easier for you to come and be able to uh, grind find what you need. So you'll be able to interact, save the search results, be able Let to guess. subtract. AQL. Right, that's right. And of course also the browsing mechanism. We enhance the tree as simple browsing, so you'll be able to easily find what you need within the Artifactory tree or simple browse according to what you need. It's about time. Right. Uh, other than that, so you know the onboarding process in Artifactory when you want to implement new technology, when you want to configure new repositories. Yeah, so tell me how it works. Maven repository, one minute. Non-Maven repository, Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, so you touched upon the next issue. So Artifactory has been long, uh, no, no longer Maven-centric for a long, long, long time. Of course. The UI is a little bit late behind. So basically... Six years. Something like that, let's say five, five years and 11 months. But uh, So when you want to come and create a new repository, let's say, for example, NPM or NuGet or Bower, it doesn't really matter. So you see all kind of different fields like uh, configure snapshots or releases, which doesn't really mean a lot for you, right? And I don't need to check, the, co uh, compress the POM consistency XML something for NuGet packages Which anymore? is very important for NuGet, right, exactly. So all of those procedures have been handled and made everything much more clear. If you're coming from any kind of different technologies that have been supported in Artifactory for a long, long time. That's, that's, that's very good. I like it a lot. OK, I'll do it for you. <laughs> so another thing that we've been thinking about for a while and finally got the proper chance to do is giving the builds their proper place. That's about time. Yeah, builds so are a huge part of Artifactory as it is now because it takes the, uh, the, build, the, the artifact abstraction to a whole new level. Instead of talking in artifact names, in file names that most of the time doesn't make any sense because it's just some snapshot or, or some build number. Now we can talk in, in builds, which is a much higher level of abstraction and make much more sense. So as they should, the builds got, oh, we got applause here. Thank you. <laughs> so as you mentioned, so the builds actually got their own model as they should, filtering builds, be able to, uh, to search for the right build that you want, navigate to the content that you want. And the biggest surprise here, the permission management for builds. <laughs> yes, so currently you have a Boolean on and off. You can either allow or disallow anonymous access to builds. In the future, we'll be able to, uh, the same way that we do with the permission target, uh, to just configure build permission. Love it. OK, the last thing is something for all the admins suffer on a daily basis. So I give you a very, very easy example. If you want, for example, to search for a specific LDAP group among And the, I have like 500. In a normal organization, I think that's a fair uh, number. That's simple. I have, I have a page with five results. Right. And then I have a next and a previous button. Right. This is all I have. And you have the whole afternoon to find the group that you need. 
What else can I do in the afternoon? You have nothing to do as it is. So in the so future, again. It's going to change. Right. So all of those procedure of configuring new repositories, uh, creating new user, importing users, so them to group a specific permission target, all of those procedure in the admin, in the admin model will be targeted as well and will be very easily, uh, easily configured in a few steps wizard. That's great. More? I think you're tired of me already, right? But there is still more to look up. OK, to. we have like. 10 more minutes and let's try to do it. So you know what this is, right? Yeah, this is a skateboard. Right. But this, this is a hoverboard. Whoa! Amazing, right? What is it? Well, I'll give you, I'll give you a short analogy. You know this, right? Yeah, this is our mailing list and forums. I know this very, very well because for en every entry in the mailing list and forum, me personally, I need to approve it or reject it before it goes there. And there is a ton of spam, usually for selling Nike shoes. And Victoria's Secret <laughs> items, right? More, Nike shoes more. Nike shoes more, OK. Yeah. So if this is the skateboard, I want to introduce you to the hoverboard. Whoa, that lo what is that? This is Artifactory new ticket portal. Not Artifactory, but JFrog new ticket portal. It so, includes Bintray as well. Yeah, so you That's can, even cooler. Yeah, so you can post all your tickets here. You can open new tickets. You can monitor your existing tickets. You can comment on them. And of course, uh, you'll be able to see the tickets for your entire organization. So you'll be much, with a single interface, of course, exporting reports, whatever you need to do, you'll be able to do it here. But what about the open source? It's a great question. So for the open source, we have a whole new knowledge base. You'll be able to post your questions here. Uh, other members of the community will be able to respond, or of course, guys from our support team or our dev teams. And you'll be able to see all of the different FAQs for Bintray and Artifactory, the much easier way for you to access the information that you actually need. So no more Nike shoes spam. No more Nike. Ah, actually, you know what? If you're mentioning Nike shoes, it's also something amazing from the future. You will have self-tying shoes. You know what? This one is the only thing from what you saw me today that will actually happen on October 21st this year. Really? This is a prototype of Nike shoes that will hit the market on time. And you know why? Why? Because for developing a future technology on time, Nike uses Artifactory. Right. <laughs>
No, but for this specific use case, it's really not a problem because once you associate specific artifact, it doesn't matter which type of artifact, if it's an NPM package, a Docker image, etc. Once you tag it, that's it. The information is there. You can easily query it. So you can actually get like the about box for your content. So if your package contains Docker image and NPM package and a jar file and whatever else you need. Like in the main world, if I, if I build a Java artifact, I can see all my dependencies. Now I'll be able to see my dependencies across ecosystems to be able to see that there's a Dependency discovery. This yeah. is something else. But okay, so you you want to be automated discovery. Sure, sure. So yeah, so so for that, for uh, well, dependency dependencies of the builds are built very simply. It's just a JSON file with the list of the dependencies out there. So for Maven, we have a plugin that sits in Gradle and and .NET and uh, and Ivy. We that sits inside a build tool and discovers which dependencies are go through. So for other tools, we don't have that. But, for example, in the NPM, the information about the dependencies is inside the JSON file, right? So you can parse this JSON file and create a building out of it. Okay, so that's that's another way. Yes, sir. When does S3 support come? It's already there okay. from the so last version for 3. Dot... Oh yeah, so where the S3 support is coming? S3 support is already there. From the last version of Artifactory, you can use it, and you can use S3 instead of the file system. The interesting part about S3 support is that S3 uses a totally different paradigm from Artifactory, right? It's eventually consistent. And this is the total opposite of what Artifactory is in terms of uh, what it is as a tool and what database it uses. So the database for metadata is ACID. Artifactory itself can be considered ACID. And um, it's a very interesting question of how we manage to implement an eventually consistent storage to behave like an acid storage in Artifactory, and we actually managed to do it. It's, it's a lot of write behind caches and read caches and retry, uh, pro, uh, retry mechanism, etc. But the bottom line is we have now S3 storage which behaves as a consistent storage. I just want to add up one thing because it's a question that came up a lot from our support team as well. Uh, so the support is, of course, for the S3 protocol, which means any S3 object store that supports the S3 protocol can be used, not specifically the Amazon S3. S3. Amazon S3. S3. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Hey, um, what's the new UI look? Um, do you support the ability to have different views of the repositories? I lost a take on this a little while back. But right now we have like, a lot of repositories, and so it becomes almost useless to try to scroll through and find so there's a way you can have like ad hoc views of like the young repos, the Ruby repos, or go off of ones by owned by different teams or things like that. Be real beneficial. Okay, uh, that's actually a, a good request. No, uh, <laughs> Uh, so what, what we did, we enhanced the filtering. The, what we did, we enhanced the, the ability to filter the, the tree, uh, which is very similar if you use IntelliJ, for example. So the ability to navigate to what you actually need to see will be very fast. Uh, fast. But to be able to uh, configure different views for the tree, uh, that's not part of it. Yeah, so I would say that probably this filtering can solve most of the problems. If you have naming conventions per project or per uh, technology, you can start typing yum and you will only end up with the repositories that contain the yum and the name or the project name and you will end up only with the repositories that contain this project. Same for dash local, for example, which is also a very common use case, something like that. Yes, of course. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, guys. We can go for hours.